Hello again everyone, welcome to the last part of the Tidecaster video. Um, this is going to be mostly the um, the base, the fish, the coral, the skin and a few other small details. So I start out base coating the cork with Vallejo Game Air Earth. Vallejo um, Game Color Earth would work just as well. I just had the air paint on the hand and it goes on quite nicely on the base. I've sped this up a little bit just so you can see me applying the base coat. Uh, nice um, flat even over. Might need two coats, it looks quite thin at the moment, but once it's all dry, it should look like this, which is nice and dark. Um, this is um, two coats over it, um, just do it all over the sand and, and concentrate on the cork. Don't worry about the rock on top, because we're going to paint that. And the shells you can skip, but I just happen to be a bit messy and, and hit those. Uh, secondly, we're going to dry brush it with Hammerfall Khaki from P3, and then we're going to dry brush it with uh, Menoff White highlight also from p3 um, really focus more on the sand um, and the edges of the cork here don't worry too much about getting in the recesses okay so i've got a new clean uh, wet palette here as well i've got scale 75 pink flesh and scale 75 pale skin on the palette ready and um, these are my go-to skin colors and you can see here i've already base coated her face and her arms with the um, pink flesh which is my base coat okay so with a 50 50 mix of the pale skin and the pink flesh I'm gonna start highlighting up the skin so we're gonna hit the raised areas first so the bridge of the nose the top of the um, eyelids the top where the eyebrows would be the tops of her cheeks um, her lips um, around the bottom of her mouth, her chin, like her cheekbones. Um, sorry, it's uh, not 100% in focus here. The, the model's face is so tiny. I keep having to pull it in um, right close to my eyes to be able to really see. Um, it is a is a very small piece, um, but you want to just do quite thin um, layers of this 50/50 mix between our two skin colours, um, and then just slowly work it up, adding in more of the pale skin or pale flesh each time, um, to the point where you get almost up to just the um, the raw uh, pale skin for just like the you know the tip of the nose. Um, maybe the dab on each lip um, in the middle kind of like our white dot highlight but instead of the white just use the um, the pale skin So I'm using a size one brush here. You can see I'm just feathering out some of the mix onto her cheek. So I've got more pale skin mixed in and now I'm just going back over again for the second layer of highlights. So again, just the cheek, really here, the eyelid, the eyebrow, the nose and the lips. So now I've put some uh, P3 beaten purple onto the palette. And I'm going to base coat all of the gemstones, which um, I did um, go back and tidy up with black after I did the armor. So this, um, you want to get sort of 90% of the gem with this color. Um, just leave a very thin sort of surround um, towards the bottom where it hits the armor. And then that will black line the gem to the armor and give you that nice, um, uh, nice black contrast line. So you don't have to go and paint it in afterwards. So there are quite a lot of gems on this model as well. You've got some on the backs of the helmet, the backs of her shoulders, quite a bit of her armor um, down on around her um, sort of her front um, sort of chest plate loincloth area.
Okay, so if you uh, excuse the quite poor Photoshop skills, you can see what I mean here. So in the top left one, we've just got our plain black gem. Uh, in the second one, we've got the purple um, base coat layered down, leaving a black rim, like a trim around it. And then we've got our first highlight in the top right. And then obviously as it flows through the highlights get smaller and smaller and then we finish off with the little white dot in the corner um, this is kind of what you want to do on um, all the little gemstones it's a simple way of doing it um, it does look quite um, good across an entire model I've, I've done an Eldar army where I painted literally hundreds of these um, and they they do look quite sharp i mean if you want to afterwards as well gloss them um on this model i want to keep it all matte i don't want to actually put gloss on the gemstones um specifically um for the reason that there's going to be gloss in other places and i just want to keep the gemstones nice and flat so i've mixed a little bit of white into the purple um, and then we're going to go back and and just do the bottom uh, left sort of arc of each gem so when you're painting in little sort of light sources into little things like these gems you want to put the highlight in the same place across all of them so if they are slightly different angle slightly different shape um, follow the, the shape but try and keep the, um, the light in the same place so if it's a sideways gem apply this same technique but just do it sort of off to the left it's quite hard to explain but always paint the same shape regardless of which orientation the gem is um, so you keep the light so like I said at the bottom the darker sort of point in the top right which is where eventually we'll put the little white dot to make it look like a reflective gem so now I've mixed even more white and I'm gonna go back and do the same again but just a tight uh, like a smaller area than I did before leaving some of the previous highlights still visible and um, again keep this towards the bottom left of the gem so I won't show you how I did the non-metallic gold, but I will show you uh, the colors used in this video. The areas are so small, it's really hard to demonstrate how to do it properly. So what I'll do is I'll, on the Eidolon, where there's a lot more space, I'll show you how to do this properly. But just for reference here, here's the colors. So our main base color, which I'm showing here, is made from uh, game color, Scorpulous Brown, and Citadel's uh, XV88. And then what I've got down on the bottom left here is a P3 Battlefield Brown and some white. And then I've mixed the white into it in various stages so you can see all the different color gradients from a mid-tone to a dark tone to a, a brighter tone to an even brighter tone and then up to just pure white. Um, and what I'll do is um, I'll show you this properly on the, um, on the Eidolon video but um, for now there's just the colors there. So what I'm doing here is just positioning the arm on the model um, just so I can see where the um, where the light's actually going to be on the little bit of gold just below the coral on her staff because um, I want to put the highlights in the right place but without knowing where it sits on the model um, I can't actually sort of see where they're going to go. So what I've done here is just sort of placed it against the model um, so I get a rough idea of where the brightest points are going to be. Okay, so I decided to leave this bit in. I was going to just leave the metal until um, the next video, but I can sort of show you here. It's a very fiddly piece to do it on. Um, the fish gets in the way a lot while I'm trying to position it. Um, you can just sort of see where I'm placing the highlights here. I've started off with the brightest of our um, mixed tones here. Um, I'll, I'll just leave this running um, now I won't sort of really uh, go into too much detail of how I've done it um, just because it's it's not really a good demonstration of it but I thought well I'll leave it in here you can get a sort of rough idea what I mean but I will do a proper uh, non-metallic gold like this exactly the same method but I'll do it on the um, on the idle on on a piece that's really visible no fish in the way or anything so um, that will be coming
So for the main uh, body of the little shark um, fish that accompanies her, I've mixed some uh, model color light turquoise with some of our um, green base coat that we made earlier, which was the scurvy green from Game Color, and uh, a little bit of the um, scale 70 high graphite gray. It's kind of a one to one to one ratio, just even of, of all of them. Then you get this nice greeny gray blue that kind of sort of represents a sort of similar color to a shark. So now we're back to our coral, which was obviously the model color sunset red, the model color flat red, and the game color um, rosy flesh. And they're all mixed together uh, evenly to make this nice uh, orangey pink red coral color. And then what we do later on is we add uh, white into it to bring it up to a pinkier tone. And then more and more and more white each layer, um, right up until finally a little white dot, um, as we did with the trousers and the boots. It's not really the best part of the model to show you um, how I did the blending of the coral on. I thought with it being quite a big piece it would um, it would be good. Unfortunately the little stick's in the way um, so you can't really see a lot of the, the small detail I'm doing. Again this, this coral colours can be featured throughout um, the entire army so I will um, do this on a, on a bigger more um, obvious piece going forward for you to see. So here you can see I've also tidied up the little uh, fish shark belly. Um, this is with the graphite grey and white mixed together, about 50-50. I didn't want it to be a pure white belly because I want to leave room to be able to highlight it white later on. So I've jumped ahead a little bit here and finished a few of the smaller details um, off camera, like the little potion bottle. Um, it was just painted with um, light turquoise from model colour. Um, and then a little highlight put around it. Um, it was just such a small fiddly detail, it was really hard to sort of show you um, uh, on there. It's like when you paint models eyes on camera, it's it's so difficult to actually get in and paint the, the pupil and the iris and everything that you just kind of got to show roughly what you're doing and then um, show a sort of after picture of what it would um, what it would look like. I also highlighted up the shark fish using the same um, colour to base coat it but just a bit more grey mixed in uh, and then I put again finally a little bit of white in for the tips. So I've mixed up a base coat colour for the rock that she's going to be stood on. Um, I want to keep the palette similar to the rest of the model so again this is made from the scurvy green from uh, game colour with some of the scale 75 uh, graphite grey mixed in. Um, there's mostly grey with a tiny little spot of the, the green in it just to tint it um, towards the sort of green spectrum um, and then this is applied um, across the whole like the broken stone that she stood on uh, there's two parts to it so make sure you get all of that So 
So you can see on the palette there, just behind, I've mixed in uh, more grey um, into it and, more, and a bit of white as well, actually, just to start to brighten it up to get the first layer of um, highlights down on the on the head. So what I'm going to do is just place some of the brighter highlights around um, some of the more prominent areas of the head. So this will be um, around sort of the eyebrow, the nose, the eyelids, much like doing her face, but um, just on the rock instead. Um, but you want to keep it more towards the top of the model um, where sort of she's, her feet sort of are stood on top of it. And the same as we did with her face, just each layer mix in a bit more white, a bit more white and just feather it out until you're almost up to pure white where you can just dot a few of the more prominent areas. So I've slowly built up the layers here, more and more white each time as before. Um, and then I've got like a nice um, sort of glow highlight across the top of her head and the top of her cheek and eye and nose. So I added some um, black into our base color to make quite a, a darker color. And then I used this to line highlight in all the little small cracks um, around the bottom of her cheek and around her lips. Um, and then I also used this to line in some of the details like the sort of tattoo bit under her eye. And using Battlefield Brown from P3, I went and painted all the little um, I guess they're limpets and barnacles, um, just a nice solid base coat on these. Uh, these small details were then highlighted up using uh, bone white mixed into the base colour and then a bit more bone white and then finally to a little dot of white, like a small highlight on each of them. Thank you. 
So I painted the two shells in the same way that I did um, the stone that she stood on, except I mixed a bit of turquoise in for the one on the left, and then I mixed more grey in for the one on the right, um, and a little bit of the uh, bone just to tie that cream in as well. Uh, the coral was painted in the same way that the one on her head was. Again, I will show you how I do the coral at a later date. So I experimented with some of the uh, lichen that you get from sort of model railway uh, shops here. I've glued some onto a piece of card and then I've sprayed it um, with black um, from a can and then white. And this made it sort of go quite um, solid so this is good for what I wanted to do next. So I picked a bunch of bright um, colours through the airbrush. I've gone with like a Mars orange base coat. I picked some turquoises, some pinks and purples. I even got out the uh, model color fluo magenta which is a really 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 super bright um, pinky purple um, and then I just applied loads of random um, colors onto these to make them look more like um, sort of realistic looking um, marine sort of coral um, you could go mad with actual colors on this and I intend to put these across the entire army I'm actually quite happy of how they came out so you can see here the colors um, are quite uh, quite nice they're a bit bright in places as well and um, this will really give the the basing scheme that nice pop um, when it's across the entire army and the terrain that's going to go with it so doing this model has got me super pumped to finish the rest of the um, the deepkin now which um, the eidolon will be next I'll be um, I'll be cracking on with that um, I will be doing a star collecting box which I mentioned um, in part two and this was a freebie for helping out at the Age of Sigmar um, open day so I think probably Tyranids um, has been a suggestion as well um, it will give me a chance to do some pretty wacky um, colours and conversions possibly in there as well so hopefully you've enjoyed this video I know there were some bits missing in there but um, unfortunately that the model's so small the angles were quite hard to get to um, but I'll be able to um, show you these on a larger model like the Leviathan or the Eidolon and as always, uh, thanks for the support so far, and I uh, hope you enjoy this video.